In today's video, I'm going to be trying to answer the question, can we predict what's going to come up in the GCSE exams? And are the kind of predicted question type videos that lots of people have made, but I made some this year, I made four videos. Are they useful? Do they work? And what difference can they make to you? To do this, I'm going to be asking sort of three key questions really. Can we accurately predict exactly what each paper is going to look like? Here are the questions that are going to come up in the non calculator paper. Here are questions that are going to come up in paper two and paper three. Can we do that? Can we come up with topics? that are definitely going to appear in, in either one of those papers. And then I'm going to look at how accurate my predictions were as to what I thought was going to come up in those papers. And then finally, I'll be looking at what does this mean for you? So perhaps you are a year 11, that have, this is 2019 by the way, perhaps you're a year 11 that has just done your exam. So I'd be interested to hear whether you thought they were useful and accurate. But actually, this may well be useful if you are currently a year nine or a year 10 and how this can affect how you prepare for your exams and how you revise. So part one, can we come up with a definitive list of, here's what paper one's gonna look like, here's what paper two, no, we definitely can't do that. You could have the cleverest AI in the world and it, it just wouldn't be able to do that. Um, particularly now with the new GCSC, although it's a, you know, it's a couple of years old now, but the new style of GCSC, the amount of content is much bigger than it used to be and the different ways that they're asking questions um, you know that there's more variety than there used to be as well so it's harder now than it used to be can you say which topics are going to come up in, in the exams i can't guarantee which topics are going to come up so if you've used the maths kitchen website uh, that was developed by my friend and colleague francis he's here now so we spent you know, we, it wasn't just a guess, was it? Those predictions that we made for the videos. We spent a, a good few days really carefully analysing all the past papers, putting them into a very complicated spreadsheet uh, in order to kind of work out what we thought was going to come up. We looked at the past four papers and there are topics, in fact, not just topics, there were quite specific question types that had come up in each of those four previous exams. That, that's not a guarantee, is it, that they're going to come up again? But if you get together a list of, you know, say, a dozen things like that, you could be pretty confident that most of them are going to come up. You definitely can't guarantee they'll all come up. But yeah, most of them will come up, I think. So some topics are more likely than other topics. Yeah, in, in, in a nutshell, that's it. Yeah, so th there are some topics that, yeah, what he said, some topics <laughs> are more likely than others. All right, well, should we look at how accurate our predictions were? So I did a video for questions that I thought were likely to come up in the paper one, the non-calculator paper, and I highlighted four things. They weren't all 100% non-calculator topics. In other words, they were things that could also have come up in a calculator paper, but seem to often get asked in that paper one. And of those, all of them did come up, but not necessarily in paper one. So the question on graphs and equations actually came up in paper two, but it did come up. And the other thing was the index laws did come up, but not as much as we, we thought it was going to be, you know, at least four or five marks, didn't we? But in, in fact, the index laws was only, there's only a couple of marks worth of questions. Um, but, you know, that, that's what I was talking about. You can't guarantee what's going to come up, but you can, you can nudge yourself in the right direction. The, then I did um, two videos with things that might come up in the calculator papers, not specifically paper two or paper three, but just the calculator papers. And I put that out ahead of paper two. And again, you know, not all of those things came up in paper two, but by the time paper three had come up, more or less everything that we, you can see that you can see the things there and you can, you know, you can see the success rate that we had. By the time we'd seen paper two and paper three, more or less all of those topics had come up, hadn't they? And but then I did a final list of questions that I thought were very likely to come up in paper three. And by then, you've narrowed your list down of here are the potential topics that might come up. Right, here are the ones that have already come up. Here are the ones that are left. So you've really narrowed that list down. And the really the only big one that didn't come up was iteration, wasn't it? So pretty much everything came up and I was really, really pleased. And 
I think it was a success, wasn't it? Are there, some, are there not some questions which are much more likely on the non-calculated paper? There are definitely some things that are, that are much more likely to come up in the non-calculated paper, but even they could, might get... So exact trig values, for example, is, is way more likely to come up in the calculated paper. And then there are some things that are just highly, highly unlikely to come up in the non-calculated paper. Anything really to do with the quadratic formula. Um, most trigonometry questions really, unless it's the exact trig values that they're after, you're not going to be expected to do that. Or sine and cosine rule, those sorts of things. You need a calculator, so they're not going to come up. So what's the best, what's the best strategy for revising for a GCSE maths? Right. So, I mean, I could come up with a list that would cover absolutely everything that might ever come up in the GCSE exam. And if you... if you it's syllabus. Exactly, exactly. It's called the syllabus. And if you practiced everything on that, revised everything on that, did some exam questions on that, um, you, would, you would get a nine, guaranteed. Because, the, I mean, but the problem would be that list would be, you know, hundreds of topics long and it would take you a long time to get through. But that's the ideal, isn't it? So if you, if you have finished all the content of the Maths GCSE in good time and you can start revising, say, from Easter... Well, actually, that's that's probably feasible. Um, lots of exam practice, getting through all of those lists of things. Actually, probably is doable, isn't it? And and that's the dream. That's the ideal. But that's that's not always the reality, is it? So your teacher or your school, you know, you might not have gone through the content that early, which is fine. Um, you may, I mean, you've obviously got other exams to prepare for. You may have other things going on in your free time. So there's just going to be a limit on your time. So people don't necessarily have hours and hours every day, do they, to revise maths. So ideally, you start your revision really early and you do lots of it. If you're in like a week or two before the exam, or even perhaps the month before the exam, it makes sense to start to narrow that focus a bit, I think. And that's where these focusing on these topics that are really likely to come up, I think that's where it starts to pay dividends. Um, and then as we go through the papers, after we've seen paper one, our predictions for paper two and paper three get a bit more accurate. And then by the time we've seen paper one and two, our guesses as to what's going to come up in paper three are actually, we've narrowed that list right down by then. So it's really, there's a lot of value, I think, in that for that final paper in um going with you know what what we think are going to be highly likely topics um but let let let's say you had followed my videos word for word and you are one of those people that had left it all a bit late you hadn't done as much as revision as you should have done could these have made a difference obviously i hope so that was why i did them you know to try and help people with their gcse's um but i've, I've worked out that these questions you know that we predicted would have given you a total of 85 marks now obviously not everyone is going to get all of those 85 marks some of those questions even though I said they were going to come up they were very difficult questions but you know could could a bit of focus in the last couple of weeks before the exam could it make the difference of a grade or even more I, I think yeah definitely um, particularly depending where, where you are you know but between the grades. If you're already reasonably close to going up to the next grade, I have no doubt that this could have easily pushed you over that. Um, but, you know, even if you've got quite a long way to go, that that this might have made a difference of 10 or 20 marks, yeah, I think it definitely could have done. So it's well worth doing in conjunction with, you know, some more longer term uh, revision. So just revising the night before, can that help? So really last minute revision. It can make a small difference, but I think you have to be really careful because staying up late into the night is probably detrimental, isn't it? You're just gonna end up tired and stressed and you know, our brains don't work very well when we're tired and stressed. So the the boring but sensible advice of getting an early night, I think is absolutely spot on. Using the videos to put your mind at rest, that's probably a pretty good idea and using it you know, even the early evening of the day before and so that you can just, maybe just practice one or two things. Don't dive into the really hard stuff. It's just going to make you feel, it's going to knock your confidence and make you feel worse. But 
a little bit of last minute just practice it's going to help your confidence and then you can go to bed feeling like yeah i've done something hopefully get a good night's rest and i think that's probably that's probably a reasonably sensible strategy what about two days before two days before two days before i think can make a big difference i think with you know if you've got a weekend of focused revision perhaps just doing a half an hour half hour chunks with a, a, a break and then another half an hour you know if you could do say even four hours over a whole weekend that's doable isn't it four hours of rev that could make a big difference i think yeah particularly yeah. on paper three particularly on paper three because we've we've narrowed that list down haven't we so you could let's say four hours i think that's realistic isn't it you could easily cover eight topics and have watched a video on how to do them and have practiced some exam questions on those so you know what those questions are going to look like i can make a big difference i think yeah so there you go can we predict what's going to come up in the maths gcse exams well sort of i suppose but particularly by the time you get to paper three yeah we can have a reasonably good idea of what's going to come up can this help you with your revision i think it definitely can um, it shouldn't be the sole part of your revision, but in addition to what you've already done, just as a last minute bit of sort of sharpening up, focusing, I think it can be a valuable part of it, definitely. Right, so I've, my videos for the last month or two have all really been focused on getting people ready for the maths GCSE exams. I'm going to keep putting videos up every week, but they're going to be more general kind of maths things. So keep coming back. Uh, keep watching the videos and I shall see you next time.